Okay, here is my next project. We have a 16 foot, eight by 16 foot, tandem axle trailer. You wouldn't believe actually what I got this for. If I told you guys, well, I'll end up telling you anyways. I got it for $50. All in all, I made a deal with a, um, a guy friend of I that I know. <laughs> anyway, so the deal is, well, obviously, the wood there, soft, warped, holes. The other issue is we have a broken leaf shackle. <laughs> and just the last minute while I was backing it into the driveway here, it was tied up by a plastic vacuum hose. Oh, um, this one. And well, it didn't, didn't hold it up. But it's got a leaf, it's got a broken leaf shackle here. Anyways, while I uh, needed something else to uh, back it up into the driveway so the leaf, this leaf spring did not fold over on us, I used a old uh, oil filter wrench, rubber one. Well, it adjusted to it just for the size that I need. But as you see, the shot, or, uh, it is uh, broken here, which if I look at this right, that was actually the front leaf spring. I say shackle, it's a leaf spring. Shackle here is, it's all facing the backwards. But anyways, this has become the new project. Uh, bearing's a little loose. Oh, it could be all this other shit. But, looks like I'll uh, end up doing all these, uh, all this whole side leaf spring, I guess. Um, I do have a spare tire for it, as you can see, it's got dry rot and just this good section here, which I'm sure it was what was where it was parked on because everything else in the tire is okay, other than the high side, even down to where I have it, what it parked on now. I'll end up looking for the worst tire and change it, which I see that, unless I find a deal and you know, just put all different tires on it, but I definitely have one of them. But I'm gonna clean all this up. Plan is to paint it, get all new wood on it. Oh man, I ain't burnt. Put this back in the garage. Put it back into where I did not find it. LOLs. But this is just a little bit of the rundown of what I'm actually gonna do next for the project. Um, so this one I got for 50 bucks. I'm working out a deal for backyard this one tilt trailer got it covered up uh, it's got no wheel wells I don't know that the lights actually work but it was originally used for a snowmobile it's got the track lines on it on each side the floor in this one's actually pretty sturdy the only issue is being a snowmobile trailer I was gonna go get it get some of these rails re-welded and um, not even re-welded, but cut the worst so sections out, get it welded up, put some new rails in there. The tires on this one's been all right. Actually, it was in the garage for the last couple years. I think the last two winters for sure. But uh, the landlord's working on a deal for me for this one. So the plan is get this one um, a little more solid to do what it needs to do. And then actually, uh, I'd look at just selling this one and rebuild that other one I have up here. And you know, as crazy as it is, I hooked it up to the Envoy and I, you know, I thought that as, tr as big as that trailer is, it would squash down that suspension. Truth be told, it really doesn't do, it doesn't do that bad. Now I'm pretty sure after a while, as they say, them 4L6E trans and them things, you don't really want to tow all the time. Oh, I never really necessarily planned a toll all the time. But should I help anybody move or, you know, pick up some uh, washers, dryers, etc. for scrap metal, light stuff, no full-size Geometros, or, and Geometros aren't even obviously full-size, but full-size vehicles going on a trailer, I won't do it. But when I went and picked it up, I used the diesel. And actually, my brother's diesel. <laughs> um, which actually did just fine. Like nothing was behind it. A buddy of mine loaded me up with the 
13 bags of aluminum cans. Now I gotta do something with that refrigerator. I really don't wanna pay a friend to uh, dispose of it or pay anybody in the scrapyard to dispose of it. And there goes that Oldsmobile that I was doing the gas tank on it a couple videos ago back in November. Now that thing more than likely has a crack in the head block on the back side of that firewall. My brother actually has it. It was something he could use for a hundred bucks. I just gave it to him for a hundred dollars. It ran fine, but it's been sitting. That tire's leaking. I remember just chasing down tires. Oh, I got a screw in that one. Or in that one when I had it. Caught a screw on the other side the following day. Um, so I, that run really bothered me. But I was glad to do, and like I said, I when I actually did the fuel pump on that one, uh, by the, I was in it two or three times actually for the fuel pump. Um, well, first it was the pump was, I set it in, um, ran fine, did what it needed to do, but then I noticed about a couple days later it leaked. Went back into it, the uh, upper gas lines and the EVAP on the top there, uh, those were all rusted out. But there was another line there that actually went, so I ended up, I think it's got, I don't know, from the back of the tank there to the front of rubber hose just on the gas line to about underneath that driver's door is all rubber gas line. Just and it was just to skate it all by. You know, I put twelve thousand. Well, I got it at what one fifty seven, and it's in the one mid one sixties, almost one seventy. Anyways, I put x amount of thousand thousand miles on it. And for $300 and the little bit I was into it, it got to be a, a good little commuter for what I needed it for. Then we hit the auction Christmas Eve. I didn't intend to actually, like I said in a couple other videos, I actually didn't intend to win this thing on a $175 bid through Copart. And it went through Copart, obviously. It was totaled out for the cosmetic on this side. <laughs> I don't care. Obviously, I'm gonna hook that thing up to it and it's gonna get scrapes and dents and whichever. Um, all in all, actually, like I said, I'm slowly piecing that thing together. The exhaust is, I noticed, just starting to get loud. And what's crazy to me is all these GMC envoys, the trailblazers, m between the muffler and the exhaust sound itself, they have, they don't, you can't even necessarily say that they're loud, but they have this unique uh, sound to it. It almost sounds like it's a, well, an exhaust leak off the back on the muffler, like it's you know got a little slash in it. All of them, I've noticed that. Everyone that's driven by me that's, well, obviously got a, quite a bit of miles that's been around the block or two, it has its own unique sound. <laughs> and it actually, to me, doesn't bother me. But what I did notice on this one, and why I say that the exhaust is getting a little loud, is up on the, right underneath the driver's floorboard there, in one of the flex areas there is, Starting to get a little, uh, little louder than I'm okay with, but I'm not out to street rod and I'm flow masters and all that happy horse <laughs> stuff. But anyways, that's going to wrap up this one for the day and I will piece together some more as I go.